All right, this is the Bits for You podcast, episode 33. After a few weeks of Hurricane Irma driving us nuts, uh, finally back to the podcast, finally able to finish editing the episode and record this intro. So, yeah, it's been a crazy week. Uh, week before was preparation for the hurricane, and a week after hurricane, we I, I actually never lost power. But um, uh, I know people that did, people close, uh, you know, family, friends. So uh, it's crazy, you know, Just trying to help them out and things like that. We actually lost water for like a day or two or a day and a half. So we had uh, bottled water saved up here and we had food. Uh, you know, we, we prepared well enough. Um, I posted some videos about it about the hurricane or during the hurricane on the uh twitter uh bits for you podcast is our twitter handle uh, same thing on facebook at bits for you podcast on instagram it's uh bits for you pod that's pod so they're all there so you guys can see uh we never we didn't get any damage to the bits for you headquarters down here in uh Broward County for the Lauderdale area. So, all good here. Um, let's see. So, uh, trying to see, I have an idea, uh, to raise money for the victims of these hurricanes. Uh, Harvey was two or three weeks ago now, and Irma was just, uh, seven days ago here in South Florida. So I, I have an idea of, uh, of selling shirts and what I'm going to do is half of the proceeds of those shirts are going to go to the victims, uh, the, for the hurricane Harvey and hurricane Irma, uh, find some local charities. Uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, the Red Cross kind of uh, is deceiving in their, in the actual, help that they provide so i'm not going to i'm going to research that more but if it comes out that uh yeah that they're deceiving like people are saying then i will just go to local charities and donate half of the proceeds for these shirts they're just uh shirts for the podcast the bits for you is going to have our logo which the logo is on our twitter facebook itunes and all the other podcast apps that you listen to this on your computer or or smartphones uh most podcasts are actually heard on smartphones people listen to it on the drive to work on the gym uh they go for a walk a jog while they're at work if the job allows you to listen to music or radio then most people listen to podcasts there so those are the options that you have to listen to podcasts as i mentioned <laughs> itunes we have the we're on the pod bean app uh, Google Play Music has us. Tune in radio app, Player FM app, the Stitcher app, Pocket Cast. There's a bunch of other apps that you can listen to podcasts. We're almost on every single one of them. Uh, if we're not on something, let us know and I'll see if we can get on it. Uh, we're not on SoundCloud because SoundCloud, you have to be a member. Last time I checked, and I'm not going to pay for that right now, because I already paid for Podbean, and Podbean sends us all to iTunes and all the other ones I mentioned. Uh, in this episode, we have uh, we talk about the aftermath of the Mayweather fight. I think we touch on Game of Thrones. Um, some other things here and there we touch on. Then we start our we have a guest uh, Juan. He is part of the Lion Marks podcast. They, uh, Juan created this podcast with his wife and, uh, they talk about, uh, New Japan pro wrestling. Uh, very fun wrestling league. It's, I, I'm, I haven't been myself into wrestling for years. Javier still watches wrestling and he's more, he's lately more into the Japanese scene, uh, the international scene as well has been blowing up more than the WWE or TNA scene or whatever it's called, Impact Wrestling. ROH is going up there. So, um, 
we have one, and he talks about how he started it, how he met his wife um, while in Japan. It was fun having him on. He We talked a long, a lot of time. <clears throat> Sorry. Fuck. When, I, when I'm doing these intros, my tongue gets fucking numb. We talked a lot uh, about, uh, you know, uh, pro, his uh, Pro Japan Wrestling. And uh, it was fun. It was fun talking to Juan. And uh, I hopefully we uh, get to talk again to him. So, yeah, I'll stop talking. Uh, no sponsors today. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, get better equipment and stuff. Uh, the shirts uh, will help. It's just, you know, our logo. Very simple. Just uh, help support us. And half of the proceeds for that, I'll donate to local charities of the victims of Harvey and Irma. And... Uh, Enjoy the podcast. The McGregor versus Mayweather fight. Yes, I caught like four rounds of it. Like what? The last four rounds? No, it was very random. I caught like a round here and two because I would watch like people shorting on like Periscope or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I saw a lot of things like that, like people holding their phones or tablets, and and they're just aiming it at the TV and trying to share yeah. it. I caught like the last like two rounds. A lot of those streams were being taken down, though, from what I noticed. I mean, yeah. So I, I caught the last two rounds stable in a stable stream. I, I had to go to 4chan and, and look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, from what what did you think uh, from what you saw? You only saw the last four rounds. What did you think of those four rounds? No, it wasn't the last four. It was like two well, random ones in the beginning and well, the last two. The last two. Uh, I mean, he just tired himself out and maybe there's like pow pow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was surprised, and I know a lot of people are reading a lot of comments uh, these past couple of days. Uh, uh, you know, on, online, people are saying, "Oh, you know that, um, you know, McGregor lost. He he should he he should have never done the fight." But look, he did the fight. He got his money. It was a money fight. Mayweather got his money. Now Mayweather can pay his fucking taxes that he owes to you know Uncle Sam, the IRS. Mayweather got has so what I've been hearing rumors like thirty to fifty million dollars plus. That's not even counting the pay per view sales, which are expected to be fucking tremendous. So, did was he? It wasn't a shit. It wasn't a a, a big of a shit show that I thought it would be. Although uh, clearly McGregor should have worked a little bit on his boxing skills. Uh, he kept hitting on the back of the head. I'm like, dude, this is not fucking MMA. So like, I know, I know that was like a subconscious thing. You're not supposed to hit in the back of the head. You saw the referee kept going in and and, and backing him away. Uh, yeah. I saw all, all. I ordered the pay per view, so I saw it all clearly. No interruptions, no lag, nothing. And uh, the first few rounds, I can clearly tell that May- Mayweather was just blocking, blocking. He wasn't even hitting or throwing punches. Just blocking. I think it was just t- it was his his goal was to tire McGregor out, and it worked. McGregor got tired. Remember, McGregor fights. The most he's ever fit fought is 25 minutes or five rounds in MMA. MMA, each round is five minutes. Um, and when he when it's, when it's a non-title shot, it's only three rounds. When it's a title shot in, in MMA, it's five rounds. So 25 minutes is the longest he's ever done. And and and, and by the fourth round in, in, a, in an MMA match, McGregor's or any fighter is usually already tired. The first three rounds or first two rounds are, are, are the ones that they have to come out strong. Round three, round four. They're already tired. So for McGregor to go past, uh, what, round six which or seven, which would be the 20, almost the 25th, 25 minute mark, I knew he was he was already struggling there. And May- Mayweather was already coming out with those punches. So, yeah, the, the, the fight wasn't a total shit show. It was what I expected. And, uh, you know, it was whatever. It was fun. wasn't wasn't complete garbage. McGregor lost. Uh, so. I thought it was 
mostly garbage anyway. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I, 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 I thought it was garbage glasses. how fucking uh, Mayweather came out. He looked like a fucking Batman villain wearing all these these fucking masks over his face like a ski mask and shit. I was like, what the fuck is this? Uh, uh, it's like intro. like my somebody I know texted me saying like he was basically saying I fucking robbed all of the whole world uh, of of watching this, you know, of uh, paying all their fucking money. Just for a shit show. And that's kind of like the message I got from Mayweather, like saying, "Fuck all of you! I I got you all fooled. I'm wearing a fucking mask." It, it was it was too it was too cartoonish, too silly, and that's what it was. It was just a silly fight where people paid. I think the the, the most expensive seat, front row, if you were there watching the event, was I think I've read somewhere a hundred thousand dollars. That's stupid. Exactly. That, that that shows that it was a robbery. He, he, Mayweather and McGregor robbed millions of people <laughs> their hard-earned money. Yeah, I know. So really, in the end, I was like, "What?" I, I it got me to like, try to watch it. I was never going to pay for it or go anywhere for it. I just got to see if there was a shit show or not. It wasn't. He was just trying to box, and he lost. To me, I was like, "Okay, whatever." <laughs> So that's what you got for me for that. Showtime even got hit with a class action lawsuit for um, their they have the the Showtime app, so you could uh, pay the uh, ninety nine dollars to watch the pay per view through the Showtime app if you don't have uh you know for the other ninety nine dollars yeah fuck a hundred dollars to watch it on the Showtime app on your phone on your tablet or or your Showtime app capable TV. Yeah, so people are the Showtime's getting sued because of the the glitchy video from the Showtime app, error messages, buffering issues, and at moments people weren't able to see anything. Some guy, I think it was in state of Washington, maybe I could be wrong, maybe it's Oregon, somewhere up there in the north northwest, uh, started the the lawsuit to uh, basically tell Showtime that they uh, that they fucked up. They weren't ready for the fucking Showtime pay-per-view stream. Yeah. Fucking craziness. Let's go with this Sonic Mania. So, last episode, a few days Uh ago, you told us that you were still waiting. What's going on? Give us an update. Still waiting. Dude, I fucking told you. Cancel that shit. Cancel it. The problem is, even if I cancel it, I'm not buying it right away. Because I have uh, still playing Splatoon. Yeah, that's not the, that's not what you said in the last episode. Yeah, I was thinking. I, this, I've been. Uh, this is a this new. Is the uh, edition a, a new, a, a new excuse. No, I, I, I might. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I can cancel it. I got. I, I would. That's to show Amazon. Hey, you fucking didn't ship this shit on time. Cancel. Well, I don't think it's on them. It's on Sega for not giving enough. You know, inventory. Yeah, it's like kind of on them though. I will say it's both of them because then Amazon should have sold it to me if they don't have. Mm-hmm. They should know they have enough. I would think. Yeah, but you should know. I mean, not not to, you should know there. not to order something like that after the release date. Well, I said it was available like a few days, so I'm like, oh, okay, and then it's been like two weeks. But did it say uh, back order when you Nothing hit buy like that, now? No. For all intents and purposes, I was supposed to get it a few days later, and it's been two weeks. So fucking cancel that shit. <laughs> That's all I like I said, say. the only thing about it is if I cancel, it doesn't matter. I'm not buying it right away because. So now you're, you know, now, now you're flipping your excuse from last time. So now you're just not gonna cancel it because you don't plan to. Even if you cancel it, you're not gonna play it right away. So you're you're just saying that you're just gonna leave it there until they eventually ship it. Not eventually. What, let's say I'm done with uh, what? Let's say I'm done with Final Fantasy. Then, at that point, I'd be like, yeah, kind of. That's like order. fucking two months from now. By that, by then, they already would have canceled that pre-order. Yeah, I'll probably be done with Final Fantasy next month. It's still, it's, so, a, it's a long way. Yeah. I don't see that happening. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's you doesn't should, happen, doesn't happen. You should I'll cave, cancel it. You should cave in and get it now. Cancel it now <laughs> while, we, while we were recording on air. To do it. Do it. No, I'm not doing it. I'm I, like, at the time of this recording, the next day I'm going to get rabbits. The Mario. And Rabbids uh, Kingdom Battle. Uh, it's like, I have another game added to my plate. And I'm going to play it immediately. 
So Sonic is just going to take a back seat for now. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Wow. Sonic Mania Collector's Edition. My vote. Cancel that shit. That's what you should do. I understand your concerns, sir. I'm very concerned that you're 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 being deprived of very precious Sonic hours. Hours I wouldn't be spending right now anyway. <laughs> QuakeCon. You went this weekend. Yeah. How was it? Pretty good. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, id Software has their studio here in Dallas. T- technically, it's in Richardson, which is the Dallas suburbs. Anyways, they have a convention every year, QuakeCon. It's free to go to. Uh, the only thing is you, they charge you for is the BYOC, bring your own computer. You could, because it's supposed to be the largest land party in the states, maybe the world. Uh, but they moved hotels mm-hmm. this year, and I, I'm not surprised because a lot of conventions that were in that hotel was the Hilton in in Dallas. They, uh, those conventions are not there anymore. I don't know if the, this Hilton raises prices or just decided to stop doing conventions. I don't know what it is, but they stopped hosting conventions and. Maybe Quake the owner didn't like the, the whole chaos and the mess that the conventions were doing. Huh? The hotel, the the owner of the hotel or, or the managers didn't like the, the chaos of the of the conventions. That's why they probably stopped it. Could be. Uh, it was the Hilton, and it's not there no more. So this this year, it was the Gaylord Texan. The Gaylord I know you like that Texan. Name. That's a, but, I, like uh, that. I like that name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so... I went. To, it's free admission, like I said. They also there's some kind of special package you could pay for too, but I, I just went for free. Uh, so when I got there, a little bit of a line for registration, that but it was not that long at all. And then I went inside, and first thing I did was uh, was do the uh, the demo for the uh, Doom VR game. So you actually got to play that? Yeah, I actually played it. Unlike E3. Where I couldn't here, I was able to. And how was it? So, overall, it's kind of cool, but the big problem I have with it is movement. Right. The, the movement. moving around was uh, kind of stupid. Like, you could hold a button down, mm-hmm. and you have this, like, I don't say it's a cursor, it's like a pointer, and you teleport there. Or you can move very slowly. Now, when you jump, like when you go into those jump, I don't know, they're called jump pads or whatever, they launch you. Right. It's really trippy because you feel it like big time when you're in VR. <laughs> like, well, what is this shit? Anyways, the only thing I have against it is the movement. Otherwise, it's fun to shoot around and stuff. It's not the, like actual Doom, but whatever. It was still fun. Would I actually buy it? I, I don't know. There's probably better VR games than that one. I think, I, I bet you Fallout might be better because you don't have to run around because Doom is a quick game. Right. So maybe something like Fallout would be better for this. But I didn't get have time to Fallout. I had to wait like an hour and a half in line to play the VR game. Hmm. So you didn't get to try it. The other ones, no. I actually didn't try any other game. So after that, I went to go watch the finals for Quake Champion. Uh, oh. Well, Quake Champions. Right. Uh, they had like a... Hmm? And how was that? It was good. It was two players, uh, both were foreigners. I think one was Dutch. The other guy was, I think, French. Uh, they were named uh, Claus and Vu Gamer. Yeah, and uh, Claus won, and uh, it was pretty good. It was pretty close, pretty epic. People were shouting and, you know, uh, kind of the things you watch on YouTube when people are doing pro competition games, right? Going crazy in certain moments and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool to watch that in person and see them. The stage was very well uh, done. Like. I don't know. You see, kind of some of the pictures. One picture I took was mostly of the screen, but you go to Quake uh, QuakeCon's Twitter handle, you'll see like more pages of the, sta- of the stage. Mm-hmm. Look pretty professional, and cool. Uh, so I was watching that, and then Did- uh, I entered a raffle. Uh, basically, I had to download the Elder Scrolls card game. Okay. And I showed proof that I downloaded it, and they gave me an entry into the raffle. So for the raffle uh, portion of it. There's a stage. They throw out free free swag and stuff. I got a mouse pad, 
uh, a Quake Champions uh, hat and a two cups and uh, something else. I forget. And they had a cosplay contest. Um, Did you dress up like the BFG? <laughs> no. For people that don't know, the BFG is the famous gun in Doom. BFG stands for Big Fucking Gun. Yeah. So that's what they call my yeah. my uh, my thing, the BFG. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> all they did was. Right. <laughs> hey, so uh, did they unveil any any games, anything uh, new that they were keeping hush hush? I think the convention was uh, already known stuff. Quake known stuff. Champions and okay. Evil Evil Within Two is coming out, and the VR games. Oh, uh, did they have a, a play, like a demo for Evil Within Two? Yeah, I just didn't have time to play it. Mm, okay. Just to wrap up the the cosplay contest. Uh, the first place was the girl. Uh, actually, I found her on Twitter. Was she Linda? Uh, hmm? Was she good looking? She, she's okay. She's a normal girl. What does that uh, mean? Her, her costume was kind of cool. I don't know about <laughs> first place. I'm not a judge. What, what, what was her costume? It's someone from Prey. Uh, have you played it? Yes, I did play it when it came out. I got it from Gamefly, but uh, I didn't... I don't know. I just didn't didn't get. I couldn't get past. I played like ten hours, and that's it. I I just wasn't doing it for me, man. It was a little bit too slow paced. I heard from a lot of people that it gets better, it gets faster, but even my my brother was playing it, and he just he didn't finish it. He's like, "Fuck it, it's it's not. It's, it wasn't for him either." She won first place. I mean, the suit itself was kind of cool, and she had a ranch. Like she spent time on that, and it's good quality. Second place was a guy wearing a helmet. Like he wore a regular regular shirt and jeans. They just had the from the game the helmet from uh, Fallout. The uh, oh the the Fallout. Okay. And then like third place was a oh it was like a another costume from Prey. I think it was like one of the bad guys. That one was kind of cool. Like none of the cosplays like wild me. I was surprised what second (laughs) one. I mean, what's how like second place was just a helmet in the end. What was third place? Like some kind of villain from Prey. I, they, I don't. I've never played Prey. So did I you unveil you. your costume? No, I had no costume. Oh, sorry. come on now! How are you gonna go to a fucking convention with no costume? I know. But uh, she won like twenty five hundred out of it. So oh, well, it's not bad. Something. Yeah, and uh, I didn't win the raffle, so no ten thousand dollars for me. Damn, so. son. What about the Powerball? Well, you didn't win the Powerball because you wouldn't be talking. On the podcast, if you want. No, I would still be talking. <laughs> but, uh. Thank you, sir. That's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give up the millions of dollars I make from this podcast. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was a good convention. It was free. Was so it, I, was it okay. better than the one, uh, I attended with you two years ago? Was it about the same? Did you feel the atmosphere was different? Or maybe, obviously, it was a different venue, so. That's it was a little deal. bit better, just because they had more things around. Was it a bigger uh, venue? No, it's smaller. Smaller. Okay. Gaylord's huge, but uh. Yeah, I know. That's what they say about Gaylord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's, I liked it. It was fun. It was free. Free is a hard price to beat. A hard price. At the Gaylord. At the Gaylord. I like that. I like any uh. Anything with the word Lord in it. Yes. Especially gay Lord. Like in Game of Thrones, like my Lord. You know that stuff? <laughs> yeah, my Lord. Yeah. Not in Lord as in the invisible man upstairs. The imaginary person who lives upstairs. No, no, not that Lord. As right. in the Lord, as in King. As in Game of Thrones. So did you see Game of Thrones? Yeah. So obviously no spoilers because a lot of people haven't seen it, including myself. Uh overall, what did you think of this last episode? It built up for the last one. The last one's gonna be super epic. It's gonna be basically a lot of action. Yeah. The la- the next one is they they've already said it's gonna be six episodes. Yeah, an hour and a half each or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, six episodes and they're done. It won't be released. Um, until possibly early 2019. It's a long wait. Yep. 
no Game of Thrones so far for next year. We'll see about that. Yeah, that's what I've been reading. That they're, they're, a lot of the scenes are very epic in scale. It's too much work for the special effects team, especially the computer animation team, to do everything you know realistically as possible. So it's not going to be a quick season. They're also filming it in the, in the winter, uh, you know, so they have to wait until it actually starts snowing, and because of fucking global warming, it doesn't snow as uh, early in the year as it used to. Now they have to wait longer, this is, which is why this current season was delayed three months from the typical mm. uh, April, March release that's been happening, that has occurred for six years. We have the uh, one of the line marks. Am I saying it correct? Right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Ryan Marks podcast as our guest on the Bits for You podcast. And um, I wanted to ask Juan, what got you into this podcast that you created? Yeah, thanks, first of all, guys, for having me here. Uh, it's, it's really cool to be able to come on here. Uh, yeah, I'm from, um, we're called the, the Line Marks, thelinemarks.com, mm -hmm. uh, which is a fan site dedicated to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, from the angle where we try to make it uh, a little more friendly for the English speaking audiences. Uh, there's two of us. We're a duo. Uh, my wife and I, my wife Yoko is, uh, obviously a native Japanese. So she does a, a lot of the translating of, uh, the New Japan content that maybe doesn't get translated very timely or, or sometimes not at all. all right. Uh, we work together. I do a little bit of the editing and some translating. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're just, you know, big fans of New Japan stuff. And we just wanted to share that with more people. One way is uh, through a podcast, the Line Marks podcast also. Yeah, that's a good thing. The, you also, uh, I, I was listening to your podcast. You met oh, your thanks. wife in Japan? Yeah. So a few years ago, um, I decided to, you know, take a little detour in my life. And I, I went out to Japan to teach for a couple years, teach English. Uh -huh. Which is something that, um, a lot of people can do. You don't, you don't need a teaching degree or anything like that. As long as, uh, you know, you get some credentials, you could go out there. They set you up. They hook you up with a school. I taught at like a junior high school and I taught a private, uh, school for adults. Uh, so I, I did that as kind of an adventure. That's where I met, um, Yoko and, uh, you know, it went from there. And that's when, uh, we, I really started getting into New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh -huh. I was just starting to follow it. Before I got out there, um, I've been like a wrestling fan since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, on and off, you know, Attitude Era, then dropped off, came back right. into it. Um, but yeah, then we, you know, we got into it. Uh, I introduced her into it. She she bit right away. She loved it the first time we went to a live New Japan show. So she was hooked. She wasn't a fan uh, when you met her? No, not at all. I had gone, and when I met her, I then I... I had gone to, a, an, I think, another show on my own. I didn't uh -huh. bother to ask her when we were just dating. Right. And then later on, I'm like, hey, go to one show with me and just try one. And if you right. don't like it, that's cool. Uh, I bought her a T-shirt to help her uh, fit in. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> as soon as we went, and it was a big show. It was one of the bigger shows. The second biggest show I think they run. When um, was that? What year was this? Yeah, this was 20... 15 the okay. summer uh it was the, the dominion show in osaka it's called osaka castle or osaka castle hall big stadium and like the main event was aj styles versus okada for the heavyweight title quite the match to watch <laughs> yeah oh man and it's crazy and and osaka's uh known for having great wrestling fans uh in japan maybe like the liveliest yeah and that helps yeah oh yeah go ahead no, no, yeah, I was about to ask you that, but you kind of answered it, where I've heard in all of Japan, when it comes mm -hmm. to you know, a wrestling show, if you mm -hmm. want a vocal crowd, it's going to be Osaka. Otherwise, everybody's going to be mostly quiet, unless right. something big is really happening. Right. I've seen, uh, while I was out there, I'm, I'm now we're now back in uh, my hometown of Chicago. Uh, while I was out there for a couple of years, I think I saw four or five New Japan shows, um, ranging from the small house show in like a community center gym that, you know, did not look so impressive, uh, to, uh, at the Tokyo Dome, uh, January 4th show. 
Um, so I've seen it in a few different cities. The Osaka crowd is awesome. They're Osaka people from Osaka are known to be a little more lively and a little loud, maybe a little ruder, a little more rough around the edges compared to uh, maybe somebody from Tokyo tends to be a little more uh, kind of refined character or reserved. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So the Osaka crowd, um, the Japanese crowds are different than than American crowds. Um, yeah. And and they're quiet for a lot of the match, mm-hmm. but when the match gets hot and heavy, and you know it's a main event, and and you know they really they really get loud for the big matches. So actually, this goes a little mm-hmm. bit back to towards the beginning with your statement uh, about going to Japan. Yeah, because you said you had no like you don't have like a teaching degree or nothing. So right. Is this some is this some kind of program you have to go through the university or school or something else? Uh no. So um. In Japan, there's like one major, um, like government sponsored, um, initiative or organization called JET, JET Program. Uh, and they're like the number one, uh, group for finding English speakers all over the world and bringing them to Japan. Um, the, for that one, you need a little bit better credentials. It's a little bit harder to get into. Um, there are so many other private companies who also do it as well. I think typically you just need, uh, a college degree. It could be in anything. And just you, you pass a, a simple English test. Um, you do an interview. They, they kind of record you and they, they set you up and then they, yeah, they hook you up with a, a school. They bring you over and, and kind of walk you through that. And, uh, I, I didn't have a lot of Japanese knowledge before I went out there. I took a class at college, like a 101. Uh, I did a little self study. Uh, but you know, Japan's an easy, easy enough country to get by with with just english and a little bit of japanese if you if you try okay because i was this actually kind of piqued my interest uh Mm -hmm. too late for me to do this now i'm kind of pretty rooted now but uh back in college i would have loved to have done this i got like like you just mentioned like 101 i did take japanese one in college so could have would have been nice Uh, yeah yeah it's i mean it's something i did kind of late too when i went out there i think it was like uh I guess 29 by then. But yeah, I, I wasn't as rooted. I, I had a little bit of time to try to try something new. But uh, yeah, it, it was an adventure and something, you know, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll always go back there and, and stuff like that. Well, you got a lot of good things. You got a wife and you got a new podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just just to name a few things. Just to name a couple, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, but yeah. What, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I just wanted, cause I think I got off track there, but yeah, I took her to a show, um, and she was hooked. Uh, there's a lot of people who are, New Japan, I don't know if you noticed when they ever show the audience, there's a, a lot of young ladies in a New Japan crowd. Yeah. Why is that? You know, there's, it's, um, I don't know if you follow any other Japanese, like, culture, like anime or, or. Yeah, anime. Like, fans are so, are so big there. Like, fandom is big in Japan, right? Like, when people are fans of their baseball team, they're like hardcore and dedicated. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just a, another kind of fandom. And it's become a little bit fashionable. And I think the, there is a rise in popularity amongst like young ladies. It's a cool, it's a cool thing. It doesn't ha- hurt to have guys like Okada. You know, he's a good looking guy. You can Tanahashi. put him on covers of magazines. Yeah. Tanahashi, Ibushi, the, all those guys uh, bring in. Yeah. There's a lot more ladies, young ladies uh, in their twenties who go to the show. So it's not, it's still when you talk to people in Japan, like, oh, I'm a big fan of pro wrestling. So you, you still get a little bit of like, oh, really? Like that thing? Oh, I used to watch that. But, you know, it doesn't have any bad stigma or anything like that. When uh, when Javier and I were doing research for our uh, May Young Classic uh, mm-hmm. uh, podcast episode we did a few months ago, uh, I saw he, he sent me a bunch of links to uh, Japanese wrestling and I believe some New Japan, right, Javier? To be honest, uh, for that it was Stardom, which stardom. is uh, so which is women. I got into it. It was really, it was well done, I, and I could see how the crowds get into it. They mm-hmm. they even started throwing what was it like these like these stringers or something in the in the room? oh yeah the streamers before, yeah that like, I was match, like or... and then the, somebody starts spinning around while their streamers are being <laughs> covered. Uh, she's covering herself in, in yeah. streamers. So uh, I could see how people get into it. I mean, I got into it for that brief second, but then 
I don't I don't keep up with it weekly like Javier does. So. <laughs> you know what? I read something or heard something a couple months ago. Like, for every fan that attends the WWE show, mm-hmm. I think they make about ten to fifteen dollars off that person in merchandise. Okay. But for every fan who walks into a New Japan show, they make like thirty five bucks. Uh-huh. Huh. And you notice when you show when they show the fans, everybody's wearing the T-shirts and a hat and a towel. Like people are just bigger fans, and or they just show it more clearly, like their fandom and stuff like that. They really get into all that stuff. Yeah, like in anime culture, you would. I know they, I'm pretty sure they don't actually use the word in Japan, but like an otaku. So oh, they use yeah, they they totally use it there. It's oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it it just means geek, and it's not as. Like here in America, geek uh, kind of got cleaned up a little, and it's you know it's cool to use the word geek and stuff. It still kind of means like dorky geek, and kind of has still a negative connotation out there. Nobody yeah. wants to like admit to being otaku. Gotcha. So uh, just uh, to delve more into like New Japan stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, in case of, like there's a fan who actually goes to Japan and wants to go to a New Japan show. I see that you have yeah. to go to like convenience store or something to get tickets. How does one usually get tickets for? Yeah, the, Japan show? the convenience store in Japan is king. It's where all your work gets. It's where you receive your Amazon packages. It's where you pay your phone bill. It's where you do like you know buy your groceries. Uh-huh. Um, and they have these kiosks um, to buy a ticket for like any event. Uh, you can purchase airline tickets on these things. Um, because, and so the, the most important thing to do is you have to find, because the, the kiosk is all in Japanese and my Japanese reading is very low rudimentary stuff. I wouldn't, uh, but I was able to, to get through it because the key is to find the code associated with the show. Every show has like a ticket code uh-huh. and it tells you go to a 7 Eleven. And go to the machine and put in like this eight digit code. And usually that'll bring up the event you're looking for. And it's just some trial and error. And eventually you'll get, you know, you, you'll see the event name. You can call over one of the, uh, the store workers. And if you ask politely, they might be able to help you, um, buy the ticket. But yeah, all that stuff's usually done at the, the ticket machines in the convenience store. Okay. Cause in the States here, we're all used to. Go to Ticketmaster or some other ticket website and just right. just order them online. I don't, I don't like Ticket. Yeah. I don't like Ticketmaster. I'm not a fan of them. Why not? <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> they're overpriced. Everything. All these. Oh fees. man, the fees, right? Uh, yeah, I once paid fees. twenty dollars in fees. I was like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> well, now this is nice. I've gotten way too many fees for so many things. Jeez. Yeah, I feel every time I buy like a WWE show ticket, it's like, oh my gosh. Like, you you know, you're picking the seats you can afford, and then right. you're like, oh, well, we got to add on like 30%. Yep. Yeah. That sounds like it. <laughs> it, so, it does. It's still a little confusing because sometimes once you get in the show, your ticket, like, it's kind of sometimes hard to find your seats. And I, I usually just go up to an usher in Japan and just point to my ticket and, you know, say, sumimasen, excuse me. And, and they know they know how to help you out, and it, it's really no problem. They're more than happy to help. Uh, just, I don't know if you wrapped up your story about with you and Yoko meeting and going to New Japan shows. So, like, what really got her her attention? Like, what did you show her? Was she more into certain wrestlers or certain things about the wrestling? Right. Yeah. Um, I think so. When we were getting there, and it's a big stadium, I think it holds like. I don't know, 16 to 20,000 people. And she saw all the other, and I think especially all the other ladies her age mm-hmm. wearing the shirts and stuff. She, she just got into it. Like it was like going to see a concert. It was like, Oh, I could feel comfortable here. Everybody loves this. We, we don't look like dorks with these wrestling shirts on. <laughs> and, and she sat there and it, the first match, it, it was, it was one of the typical new Japan, like here's a big tag match with a bunch of people. Um, yeah. I remember it had Jushin Thunder Liger, I think, and, and she just liked it, right? Like just a pageantry. Here's a guy in a cool mask. He's got a cool anime theme song. Everybody's clapping along. Yeah. That, that just hooked her. And she stayed hooked the whole, the whole, like, it was like a four, four and a half hour show. You know, I almost have a similar story like yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my fiance, she 
casually watch wrestling, but very little. Mm-hmm. And then I took her took her to the Royal Rumble uh, last year. Oh wow! Yeah, it was in San Antonio, which was a bit of a drive. When I say a bit of a drive, it's better than like twenty hours. It was like a four hour drive or something. But uh, the the Royal Rumble was just was massive. It wasn't a like I think it was like forty thousand people or so. Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, it, was, it was in the Animal Dome. And uh, anyways. That whole event like got her hooked. She got into it because this is the atmosphere alone. Everybody's going right. crazy for it, and you know, and everything is happening in the ring. It's massive. All these you know reactions and all yeah. you know music, etc. Yeah, it's different yeah. when you're there live. I mean, any event, whether it's wrestling or sports, like baseball, anything. Uh, going there live, I've taken people there live, and they don't even watch it on TV, and they're like, "Wow, this is so much fun." Going live, you feel you get into mm-hmm. it. Because you're part of the energy that's in that arena. Yeah, like personally, I've been hooked. I've actually been to ten WrestleManias in a row. And, oh, uh, wow. yeah, awesome. my next, yeah, it's been. I tell you, I went to the first one. I went with the first one actually with Robert. Yeah, and it was in it was in Orlando, and that was uh, Ric Flair's retirement. Oh wow! And uh, after that, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I kept on going. I never went to like a WrestleMania I didn't enjoy a lot, and. uh so this next one will be my eleventh one. It'll be pretty crazy. I don't, oh, I wow. met- I'm jealous. That's that's one of my <laughs> my things to do for sure. Yeah, and I you know I obviously recommend it. I've been to so many, but uh, it, it's 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 very addicting. And, and I know you people, you know, I love to watch it on TV, but going to mm-hmm. it's, it's a big difference. Yeah, for sure. I have a friend who has this theory, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Like everybody who watches rest who like if you just show them wrestling they'll enjoy themselves not everybody's going to tune in right but everybody's every almost everybody used to watch wrestling kind of and they'll they'll sit around and watch a show with you and you know if it's a big pay-per-view and everybody gets into it a little bit i think i think so yeah. i think you have some some point in that yeah i think so i want to ask so when you're when you took her when you took your wife to that show and she yeah. got really into it now after the show, after everything was said and done, did she take it upon herself to continue that, or did you, or like on her own, did or did you kind of guide her and tell her what's what's this and who's who and who's what? Like, how did that unfold after that event for her? Yeah, yeah. I think at that time I had the New Japan uh, subscription, mm-hmm. so. We were following together, and it was a thing where, and this is part of how we work with the line marks now. Yeah. Um, she could understand a lot more than I can because she can read up on the news. She could fo- follow the in-ring promos. Um, I can't follow that. My Japanese is not to that level. So it became a thing of like, at the same time that uh-huh. she's learning it, like I'm learning it with her. Um so we were kind of doing it together kind of thing. It wasn't a thing where like I sat her down like, okay, here's 40 years of, of new Japan. Like this is how you, you learn everybody. She was learning um, with you as yeah. you guys researched it together. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I don't have like a deep history with new Japan mm-hmm. and you know, there's a lot of stuff we want to go back and learn about, but just the current stuff um, that became like a fun thing for us to do. Hey, what are they saying? You know, what's going on? Uh, she would just translate all all that stuff for me. Yeah, uh, honestly, I've been I started using your website, The Lion Marks, and because uh, you do miss a lot, you because uh, New Japan does have its own English site, which is New Japan 1972. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't. It is not a. It doesn't follow as many stories that you would, you know, the Japanese site. Yeah. So you really get easily lost in the shuffle. Like even when I first started watching New Japan. Mm-hmm. I would watch it on Access TV. Right. Uh, this is back when, you know, Morrow was doing announcing, uh, not JR as much. Uh, and, uh, that's all I knew what they were saying. Mm-hmm. And I would go to Reddit and read once in a while what was happening. And, but the problem was if I try to read it, I'll be, I'll get spoiled because Access TV is behind. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then, and... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No. Go ahead. No, and then JR take over and he's, uh, even those even less than Morrow, so was not, not to put JR down too much, but you know his heart is in WWE and not this. Like he would actually promote, he actually did it. He had promoted the W Network on New Japan. <laughs> we got into that in one of our episodes. 
<laughs> I, 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 yeah, I remember that. I heard that episode. Yeah. So that was that was not that was not so cool. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay, I really need to follow this on my own. I, I got subscri- I subscribed to New Japan World. Mm-hmm. And the first one I first major event I watched was the Super Juniors, and then Dominion and G1s. And ever since then, I've been I stayed with New Japan World. I don't use Access TV no more. But there might be other fans like me who just starts with Access TV and don't have much information. And just following the Twitter is not enough, especially when it gets spoiled. So if you want to follow the current stuff, you can watch New Japan World, but it's not enough. So, so a website like yours or Reddit it really fills in a lot of the blanks for you. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, um, I, you know, there, I think they're, it's getting better because when I started, there was like no English stuff at all. Um, and, the thing that's awesome about New Japan was even before I could understand it, they told all the stories in the ring, right? There's no, it doesn't have the same structure as WWE with like storylines and backstage skits and, and in ring promos so much. It's, you can kind of tell that the guys don't like each other from the way they, they wrestle. Right. Um, but there is all that little extra stuff like, you know, what's Yano talking about? What did Okada say post match? You know, what's his deal? Uh, that, you do miss out if you don't get some translation. Yeah, because without you know, commentators don't translate for you. I'm assuming like Kevin Kelly and mm-hmm. Don Callis don't know any Japanese. So some they say Yano says something in mm-hmm. the ring. You're like, yeah, they're not going to translate for me. Uh, so that's when you have to start doing some research. And I don't know how many people are really to do research. Sometimes just listen to a podcast is better, or or just you know browse around through Reddit or something. But yeah, like just a lot of questions for me. You know, let's say, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, oh, like Suzuki's entrance. Mm-hmm. Everybody sings along, and I'm like, what is this song even about? It doesn't even yeah. sound like something that he would come out in. So, so I'm cl- completely clueless what was even happening. Is that something that actually you, do you even know about what their the song is even about? Yeah, actually, um, I think a couple months ago we translated it on our site. Um, and for some reason, and we did it on a day when there was like no news. And I'm like, oh, Yoko, we got to put out something today. And she's like, let's just translate this thing. And it actually is one of our most found like searched pages on the internet because people are looking for what it means. It's it's about being a, a warrior and uh, being lonely and being on a path kind of thing. The part where everybody sings along, um, Kaze ni nare, when he answers the ring. Uh, means uh, be the wind, be like the wind. Okay. Um, and he he actually like, commissioned that song from that artist. It's a famous Japanese singer. He he loves her. He asked her to make a song for him. I don't know if it's an original, but um, he sought her out. She actually sang it live for one of his Wrestle Kingdom matches. So he's like a big fan of hers. Okay, yeah, because I always wondered, and I'm like, what is this about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and this is the kind of things they don't really fill you in on. And, uh, you know, I'm glad there's like websites like yours that, uh, do fill in. Actually, so the, speaking of just singing, another sure. one I was going to bring up was, uh, I think I said his name right, Tai Chi. Uh, he's yeah, actually Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Yeah. Okay. Like he's in, uh, Suzuki Goon's, you know, uh, like group. Yeah. And, uh, and then I saw him in G1 finals that, that uh event and he was like in an opening match and he comes out with his girl and he's i don't know it looks like he's lip syncing to the song and i'm like okay what is this i never seen this before yeah you know what it's, all, it's all about i had to ask um i said you know what's what's he doing here like is that his original song i asked yoko and and that's something where she had to like research because i don't think they mentioned it on even the japanese broadcasts but it's just um it's actually a song from a gothic metal band a japanese goth band which is kind of a big genre out there um and it's just it's like just a typical like idol song it's nothing really special nothing about him he's just singing along to it he's just mimicking it i think it's more about that kind of um the look kind of castlevania look he's going for and 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 thing it's nothing really uh or i haven't found any meaning to it that that really means anything about him okay yeah because you know suzuki goon you know i I see these guys suzuki comes off like a shooter a badass kind of guy and then you have this guy like half blonde hair 
lip syncing. You know, like, okay, right. What's this? <laughs> yeah, I think the, the whole the whole gimmick and angle is like he's just he thinks he's really great and and just trying to be really flashy. That's part of why people don't like him or he's kind of annoying uh, character that people that's just part of him being just very showy and people don't really want to hear the song, but he's going to sing it all anyway. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Is that girl usually with him or is that was her first time only? Uh, she's with him uh, quite a bit, especially recently in the past year or so. She's um, she's a famous um, like model, kind of sexy model in Japan where like she'll put out videos of of her just being attractive. I don't think there's ever nudity or anything. So what they call a uh, glamour model. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they call it graveur. Graveur, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, over there's graveur. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're no, all just saying we think we, we know what it's called by pretending like we don't know what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she's she's one of those. So she's um, she's from his same hometown. Um, I don't know what you know the other connection is. But yeah, so she's famous in her own right. And she just comes to make him more annoying. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, what is this? <laughs> yeah. So that's part, that's part of, you know, I think part of it, what, you know, makes New Japan cool for new people, it's, it's this like alternative thing, right? To WWE. The way like maybe you first get into anime or manga, it's like, what, what's this stuff? Why does it look, you know, it's a little familiar, but it's a little weird and kind of makes you want to learn a little more sometimes. Yeah, I, I definitely want to keep on watching. Even when it comes to wrestling, it's definitely a big alternative. Because let's say in the States, if you just watch wrestling here, I guess you have, you know, ROH, uh, which even that has some of the Japanese stars sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I got into more into Japanese wrestling and stardom was another one I started watching. Uh, it's just so much wrestling out there, but I, I always yeah. wanted to see the more global scale, like even like Lucha Libre and stuff like that. I, I haven't got into stardom yet. Is it, is it really good? Do you recommend it? I haven't gotten into it at all. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, like, uh, give an example of the Maya Classic. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of girls there that have wrestled in stardom. They they seem to attract a lot of high profile women. Sometimes women who are just learning too. You'd be amazed at some of the opening matches alone. Because what they do yeah. usually in the opening matches, they'll have young teens wrestling. Like it'll be this 12 year old having a match. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> right. And then if you see her wrestling, like, oh wow, she could wrestle better, better than like Kelly Kelly or someone like that. <laughs> which doesn't not to be mean doesn't seem like yeah no no yeah <laughs> yeah but uh yeah and, and then as you go up in the card you know it gets more intense and you can still tell the skill levels is quite a difference yeah. and you, you know and recently we you know took one of their top stars uh <clears throat> so it's I, I recommend it this is another thing they're kind of famous for is i don't know if you've ever seen it this is related to kenny omega he actually wrestled like a nine-year-old girl. That match took place in stardom. Oh, that's where that's from. I've heard of that. I think I've seen like a GIF. Uh, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, it happened a while ago. This is like when Kenny Omega was like in DDT or something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's actually a surprisingly good match. Versus, okay. You know, <laughs> For I what it guess, is, yeah. Right, you're like, oh, this is gonna be whatever. But then you watch and I'm like, you're entertained by it, and uh, it's like better than some of the WWE matches I watch. But uh, <laughs> it's it's hard sometimes to make it through. I'm I'm always gonna love WWE. Um, it's hard to make it through some of those long shows though. Right, I know that's even Raw. I can't watch all three hours. I have to DVR and watch portions of it. But you know, and, and there's other things. They're all big time alternatives. This is stuff that you wouldn't see here. You're never going to see a nine-year-old wrestle uh, some right. grown man. <laughs> and uh, and it's entertaining and different. So, uh, yeah, I, I recommend Stardom. Just uh, overall, it's fun and, and an intense product. Oh, cool. Do, do you watch, because you're into New Japan, do you, do you ever watch uh, ROH? Um, so, not really. I think I've tried a couple of times. Um, yeah, I, I, it's good. You know, it's, it's great wrestling. I, uh, I don't know. I, I think 
I was definitely like in the WWE mind when I was trying to watch it a little bit. Um, I because I don't watch as much WWE anymore. I think I'm almost out of time and of watching wrestling. Like, and New Japan has long shows as well. So I, I'm not. I, I will be at the the two shows that are coming up. Uh, the War of the Worlds are doing a crossover with New Japan right. in Columbus, Ohio, and, and a show in Chicago and a couple other shows. So I'll, I'll go check those out, but uh, no, I'm, I'm not so familiar. Okay, yeah, because they, they uh, I do like their product, but I honestly just watched their TV show. I okay. I, their pay per views, they're not doing a subscription service like New Japan. Okay. Or even Stardom does the same thing. Stardom is a subscription service as well. Far away, you have to actually order the pay per view, and it's like thirty bucks. Oh man, yeah, those days are long gone, right? Like. Right, yeah, you're still using that model, but it's like everybody's going to subscription now. And uh, that's the way to go, really. So, until they do that, I can't, I'm not really planning to watch any of their big shows. Yeah. But if they come here, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll go to it. And For sure, yeah. The weekly show I'll watch. Because, you know, I, I always enjoy like a Young Bucks match or. Yeah. Even even Cody now, he's doing pretty good. Uh, actually, he had a match against Okada a few months ago. Right, yeah. Know? Yeah, that was that was good. So, yeah, I'm kind of interested to see New Japan spread out more and come to the States more. Because, uh, you know, the, the show I'm referencing here for the Okada and Cody Rhodes match, that was in Long Beach in July. It was the, like the G1 US special. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that that, that trend keeps on happening and they do more tours over here besides with ROH, like their own. And uh, we'll see what happens <laughs> with that. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm. You know, we're gonna start campaigning. I think the line marks will start campaigning to try to get them to come to Chicago. I know that's selfish of us, but you know, we we'd like to see them on on this side. Yeah. Uh, just so t- before we wrap up, just wanted to go into a little bit about your podcast and sure. website, and uh, you know, anything else you want to talk about or mention? Yeah. Um. You know, we're just, uh, we started it, I think we started our site, like, just with that, that special you're talking about when New Japan was in America. Um, cause it seems like since then, like, it, it's been coming, but like, they've really been exploding. The shirts are all over, right? Hot Topic. And now, uh, New Japan's got a lot of cachet and they're really cool. So that was the time when we were just sitting there and we're like, Hey, let's start this thing. Let's, you know, Let's translate the stuff that's missing, whether it's like backstage promos, some interesting in-ring commentary, um, newspaper like interviews with with pro wrestlers, uh, all that stuff that adds a little bit more flavor, um, which I've been selfishly keeping to myself as I ask Yoko, hey, what are they saying? What are they doing? Uh, you know, let's let's put it out there and see if other people want it too. And, it, you know, we've been really happy because a lot of people uh, have told us they enjoyed it. So we're going to keep, you know, doing that. We added a podcast. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do some more stuff in the future. You know, we'll see as we keep going. It's kind of curious because I, I actually listen mm-hmm. to some of your podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the, like the Yano one, you mentioned, uh, you do some translations of the stuff he does. Uh, is that like the formula you're going you're gonna to continue or you're going to have different ideas for later on? Uh, we're, you know what? We're trying to figure it out as we go. Uh, I guess the podcast so far has been a lot like language stuff because we'll get people asking like, oh, what are they saying? How do you say this? And it's easier to just speak it on a podcast. Um, so, so far that's what um, we've been doing. Uh, but we're always open to suggestions and, and hearing what people want. I don't know if we're going to do so much like match analysis because I think there's a lot of people who do that really well. Yeah. Um, other shows. So I think we're kind of doing our niche thing here. Would you ever consider like a commentary uh, for a match or for a show? Yeah. So we have, um, you know, we've been trying, like we've done a couple test runs, like right. to see how it'd work. It would be like, I think unfairly too difficult for Yoko <laughs> or like too much. It would be too much on her to like have to live listen and live uh, translate like, commentate. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then it would be boring. You know, I don't know. I'm not a play by play guy, so I wouldn't add anything good. Um, we've done 
some like live chat uh commentary stuff we've tried a couple times of course then we have to wake up at like 3 a.m to right. to do it yeah um so we're we're oh, we're gonna keep trying new things because i think there are people who who want it like live or or to try to sync it up with what they're watching because you do lose a little you know watching the show then you have questions and then like a few hours later you read about it you know it's not perfect right so we're trying to figure it out a little bit. Oh, so it's it's going to be difficult with the time difference. Yeah, you guys are still fine-tuning it. It's uh, a better word for it. Yeah, yeah, we're we're figuring it out. And at the same time, trying to go to work and school and stuff like that. It's not easy being a New Japan fan stateside, but yeah. it's okay. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Especially with the time zone difference and all that gets in the way. Yeah, and G1 was tough, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too much wrestling. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of wrestling. Well, uh, thanks for coming by. And uh, for anybody who wants to listen to more or read more. Where can uh, our listeners uh, contact you or follow you on social media or email? Yeah, um, you know, the linemarks.com is the main spot. Um, there's links to our Twitter. We're at the line marks Facebook page, whatever it makes it easier for you to follow. Mm -hmm. You can subscribe, I think, via email in Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast app you use. If you search the line marks, hopefully we come up. Um, I think that's the places for now. We do have um, we started a Patreon, which uh, is we're using as like a tip jar for now. Uh, if anybody, you know, some people were really generous. They wanted to tip us. And we're like, OK, we got to do something. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you know, we put up a couple exclusive things on there, like, um, retro back match commentaries. Like we did an old, like Jushin Thunder Liger match from 94 or something. We don't want to keep stuff away from the main site so everybody can enjoy for free, you know, all the current stuff. But, you know, we're doing some other things because hopefully we're trying to raise funds for some future projects, uh, we're thinking of getting into. All right. That sounds good. Any last words, Javi? Uh, not really. <laughs> you guys said it all, really. Uh, all the plugging. Yeah, once you get me going, like I, I, I could keep talking and podcasting all day. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you guys so much for, for letting me come on. Uh, yeah, it's just fun to talk wrestling and stuff like that. No, it was fun. I actually learned uh, a few things here and there. Uh, I actually heard, I think it was the first couple episodes of your podcast, but now I got the idea of what you guys are doing and mm -hmm. i'll just continue listening because it's it, it helps out a lot especially someone like me who doesn't really know have any clue about new japan maybe i can pick up a couple of things and i i, I myself like the japanese culture i like a lot of their their films i like you know everything J the japan has to put out so that kind of helps me it makes me feel like i'm in japan when i listen to the to your podcast awesome i don't know, I don't know if that it's, makes sense it's great thank you no that's awesome <laughs> so uh yeah it's it was really good having you here appreciate you coming on yeah thank you juan thank you guys and that's it it was fun talking to juan the lion marks podcast i've heard the first uh, few episodes great freaking podcast they know what they're doing they uh, they uh, interact with the fans on their Twitter. They interact with fans on the, via email. They answer their questions. They help with the translation of certain phrases that uh, the uh, is it NJPW New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, their wrestlers uh, say and and uh, things like that. They help with the translation a lot. Uh, the, very cool guy to talk to. Uh, trying to get want to uh, be on the podcast again. In the future, uh, and you already heard where how to find them, uh, his website, his Twitter, his email. So give those guys a, a listen. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. I'm gonna stop this recording now. Uh, you could always email us here at bitsforyoupodcast at gmail .com. Our Twitter and Facebook handles are the same at bitsforyoupodcast. And that's it for now. Uh, next episode will be uh, in a week. So subscribe to us on iTunes. And I don't know if Google Play does subscription where you can uh, be notified each time there's an episode. I know iTunes does it, Podbean app. 
uh, notifies you if you subscribe or follow. And please, on iTunes, give us a reviewer rating. It's very simple. It takes less than a minute. You hit write a review. When you find us on the Apple Podcast app, every iPhone has the Apple Podcast app installed when you get the phone brand new or, or used. It's easy to find. Um, if you don't have an iPhone to review us, you can also you do it on your computer, laptop with the iTunes app. Download it. Click uh, search for us. And then click on review. Write a review. Give us a rating. That's it. Very simple. Appreciate that. I think you can also review us on Podbean. Also helps there too. And uh, see you guys soon.